Hat a warm welcome to all our viewers to our series Natural Medicine. And today I have a specialist here, Dieter Holler, and he totally convinced and fascinated me. Not only that he works as a general practitioner or as a specialist, and he's been involved with TCM all his life, also well trained within Germany, but he was looking for security of TCM and then went to China and gained security there. And what else he brought back from his many years of practice in Germany? They're just treasures of knowledge. And it's precisely about these treasures of knowledge that we'd like to make some programs. He also summarized that in this book, which contains a lot of recipes about so-called tea mixtures, and that it's not just a tea, as I've learned, but are effectively medically effective things. That's the topic of today's show. And I'd like to say one more thing. Today, we're talking about the powder for men and what it all does and entails. And that's the topic. Stay tuned, we'll get started right away. Here we are again, and now I can also show Dieter Huller. There he is, there he is. Welcome, dear Dieter. Hello, Alexander. I don't know, I think I read about it a year ago. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time. I prepared myself for our shows, and then it was a year before you came back. In the meantime, I've given it to three doctors. The doctors read it and said, wow, I have to have this because there are incredible recipes in here. And why should you rule out one and only do the other? You can complement it, add it together, right? Yeah, exactly. What is so special? How can a tea suddenly have such an effect? A uh, tea in China is not just a tea, but a potent, sometimes toxic drug. And it has high impact. It's herbs. I would guess most of the herbs are made up of bark and roots. This is relatively rare for us. Very rare. But it's also about the preparation. You know, I saw a film where they do two-hour ceremonies over tea. That was in Japan, not China. Yeah, maybe that's an exaggeration, but it's mostly twice for half an hour. That means you put the cut herbs, roots, bark, leaves and stalks in a pot, an earthenware pot or in a stone pot, depending on the recipe. Pour a little water over it, about two or three centimetres, and then it's boiled. Boiled as quickly as possible, half an hour. Then the whole thing is strained. The concoction is saved and the herbs are again supplied with fresh water and boiled for another half hour. And in the end, both decoctions are combined into one. And that would be the norm. But in the meantime, there are also a few other processes, so we can maybe talk about them later on. But about this tea blend that we're going to talk about now, it has nothing to do with the tea blends that we buy packed in these bags. Absolutely not. It's a pharmacy product, and that's not to be despised. They are highly effective, and you can also do a lot wrong. If I have someone who is ill, and among their overall symptoms is a heat build-up and a chill build-up, a severe chill build-up in the body, and I make the cold even cooler or worse, the hot even hotter, that's where I can make serious mistakes. Energetically speaking, now, not from the means, from the effectiveness of the drug itself, but solely from the energetic effect. OK? We pay a lot of attention to the energetic in the body. These recipes that you put together aren't compliant for free sale, in wholesale, but these are so-called compactates and only available from a few pharmacies who have to mix it up specifically. Is that correct? Of course, there are compactate products which are most modern in terms of preparation, but there are still raw herbs. But these are completely normal herbs, dried and easily prepared. There are already prepared herbs. You call it preparations, so prepared herbs. And then it has a completely different aspect. I don't think there were any compactates in Germany or Europe until three years ago. He just made a cup of tea there. So there you would have this recipe now when we're talking about the powder for men. Then you would have bought this 154 gram Romania radix preparation and fructose and so on and all these things separately and then you would have to put it together yourself. 
You'd have made a recipe out of it according to these instructions. These are not yet compact eight recipes, they have to be converted. The pharmacy gets it and converts it into a compact eight. They then have a powder. So compact eight is a powder. As a rule, it is a powder. In the glass and then hot water, dissolve, done. Simple. It has less taste. Some, they can't even drink the tea because of the taste. The whole house smells extremely of it. When you walk into a hospital, you can smell it 100 meters beforehand. These herbs smell so intense and some people just can't stand that smell. It makes them sick. Or there is the raw drug, which is ground very, very finely. And there are special grinding machines. You can fill a capsule and swallow it. It's easy. It doesn't taste like anything. Neutral. Or you have to pour hot water over the powder and drink it in bits when it cools down three times a day and throughout the day, depending on the case. Well, the compact dates are there so that I don't have to take on this whole recipe ceremony myself, but rather it is already ready and I only have to pour hot water over it. Well, that'll be done quickly. There are now state-of-the-art machines. The pharmacist has a large machine and has components from these plants in a certain form. The pharmacy mixes them together via this machine and then fill, uh, fills it into small jars. These are mostly portions for two to four days. It depends. The doctor has to decide how long it lasts. OK, well, this isn't intended for long-term use, but such recipes are simply therapeutically effective. They're for only limited intake times. It's medicine. It's not something to think, uh, drink like tea, a delicious herbal tea, but you should only take it to a limited extent. The book also contains times that sometimes have to be exceeded, depending on the doctor, to make it work, because it just works slower. I talked to three doctors about it. They are, of course, at home in the complementary medicine. You can already imagine that. And when I showed them that, for example, a problem like that, a clear nose, people all have stuffy noses. There's a, a tea that should clear your nose. You can also take it as a tea, but the modern and the best form are as compactates. For many reasons. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, compactate out of this book. I found eye powder here. I found peace for the gut and so on. And if I now appeal to your experiences again, you worked with these recipes. So the, the patient had a medical problem and you helped them with a tea mixture and that helped. Exactly. Does that always help? It almost always helps, really. There are also exceptions. You can't cure every disease. For example, not everyone is approachable or can take it. Not everyone can be addressed in the regulatory process. These are regulating therapies, harmonizing therapies. One always tries to balance and harmonize in Chinese medicine. The therapy often only consists of harmonization. But I think that's something fascinating. It's totally fascinating. We grew up saying that when you are sick, you get medication or therapeutic treatment and so on. And now you come and tell me we can try some tea. Exactly. And there's a good chance that this tea will eventually bring about that effect. They're always really good, even with serious illnesses. So I also have treated serious illnesses, asthma, bronchial, even with tumour diseases. But I wouldn't rate that so highly now. These successes, it can always be a coincidence. There are no studies on it now. But it's a lot of fun when you see how a patient, for example, a simple story. He was always stressed, always rushed, who never calmed down. How they suddenly became calm, how they, how the blood pressure drops, how the whole body function regulates towards becoming calm, being relaxed. And that's fun too. It's also an illness for me. Restlessness, nervousness, sleep problems. Yeah, and you can treat wonderfully there. That's really great. Well, I wrote down that we're going to do a few programs today, including about infection killers, which are available, uh, a clear nose, tinnitus and stress relievers. I, I've made a note about painful menstrual cycles that we should discuss. But today we'll start with the man. Namely in here, I found a, a powder for men from the Golden Shrine, it says here. It's also called from the Golden Cabinet. The same thing's meant here. OK, good. Symptoms here, severe tiredness, exhaustion, paleness, aversion to cold, cold legs, cold feet, indications, 
impotence, erectile dysfunction, lower back pain, enlarged prostate. A lot of men have that, prostate enlargements. From about 40 onwards, it starts for us men that the prostate gets too big, and then at some point urination becomes difficult, and sometimes it doesn't work at all. What does difficult mean? Does it, uh, yeah, you want to, and you can't. Indeed. You're standing at the bowl and it just doesn't work. And exactly for this problem, such a tea mixture would be also something excellent. Well, the other symptoms should also fit. It, it's for the cold. For the cold? Yeah, if someone is very cold, very cold, cold feet, cold hands, but also the feeling of being cold in the kidneys, for example, is therefore an important characteristic, a, a very important one. But the men are more the ones who are constantly hot. There's also the opposite. Both can be a problem, the cold and the hot, but in this one it's more the cold. And then there are other things. So I can't say now all men who have a problem with urination now, would that be the right tip? You can't say that, and that's the whole difficult thing about it. You always do need a doctor who knows their stuff, because as mentioned earlier, you can do a lot wrong. And just when you give the man who's freezing something to cool him down, because he has other heat symptoms, you can really produce a problem as well. But not now I'm trying not to make that mistake by reading this carefully. My aversion to cold, I have cold legs and cold feet. If the person reading this now says, I don't have cold legs and feet, then that's not my tea. It's not necessarily their tea. But the indications still state that it is the point. For example, the prostate enlargement is in here. That would be true for this man. Exactly. And there are, of course, other signs of cold, not just the energetic cold. There are symptoms where someone's very slow, very tired, very exhausted. These are also indirect cold signs. But would I now find somewhere in the book prostate enlargement problems with the symptom hot feet, hot hands? Less, much less, much less. But what do I do now? What are people doing now? We're talking about prostate enlargement right now. He doesn't have cold legs, but hot ones. Well, if he has hot feet, he can't take that. I wouldn't recommend it, but he often has other symptoms as well. He often only has cold joints, cold knees, cold feet and a different heat. You can try that in combination with other herbs, but the doctor has to determine that. You can no longer do this as a ready-made recipe. OK, good. This is really only for the people who have it all one-on-one. -on -one. It's a special clinical picture. It's people. I think I, I wrote it in the book. This is called, in China, the loin lame. They likely have back pain. They have knee pain. They, li they likely freeze. They're not very active, have erectile dysfunction or ejaculation dysfunction. It would fit there. I recently spoke with a hormone expert and she told me that for erection problems, there is very often an excess of cortisol. And you even once can regulate this over what's called DMSO, no, no, not MSO, some, some hormone, I, I forget now, but simply a hormone that brings the cortisol back into balance. OK, now, I don't know what you mean. Do they also have an effect on hormones, T-blends? It's unexpected, but it is to be expected because it works. I mean, here, if someone has such different symptoms with... Uh, the heat. We'll have to see. How, how can I regulate it? It's always about... There's a, there's a top-down movement in the body. There's a bottom-up movement. There's movement from the inside out and from the outside in. And you should always judge a person and will try to regulate, control and harmonise these things. And we get to, with another example, in the case of a, let's call it a, a, a tranquilizer. In China, one would say a cardiac remedy. How do you proceed then? Well, I can explain how such a remedy can also be controlled. It still says here, chronic asthma, also in the powder for men, yeah, exactly. That means it also affects my bronchi. That's what the Chinese would say. Weakness of the lungs themselves. 
And then there's something special that we don't even know about. The relationship between the lungs and kidneys is not good. That's where asthma comes in. In Chinese medicine, the body of energy, the body has the task of leading the lung qi downwards. And the kidney has the task of absorbing this qi. If it can't do that, there is spasm, a cramp in the bronchi, and then you have a problem. But there are other options for acute cramps. There are also types of acupressure, of acupuncture. When I see how these tea blends are put together, that's eight different ingredients incorporated here. I can't pronounce any of the eight, I have to say. I won't go into these individual effects because none of the audience will be able to understand. But who put this recipe together like this? Where does it come from? Most of the recipes are very old recipes. They go way back to 2000 BC, in part. They're very, very old and always proven medicines. They're summarized in thick books, in different books, and also in letters in, in a shrine. There, the precious treasures in monastery are kept, and there are very special recipes, very valuable recipes. Well, they were sometimes traded, I have to say, almost like gold in terms of value. It's exciting to see such developments. I want to say that the individual herbs are not as valuable as the whole recipe. There was a reason that these dosages are the way they are. They've been adapted and corrected again and again for centuries. Not exactly. The recipe is more valuable than the individual remedies. That totally upgrades the remedies. And so you can't look at them individually. Then you can see this remedy, it makes heat. I can't use that with him, he's already hot. Anyway, his face is red and he feels hot. I'd leave that out and use something else, maybe something cooling. So it's still about energetics, always harmonizing, always going for com compensation. You always try to find a balance. I see a little problem. I really do have this pharmacy here as a book. I can read through it and now I'm back to the hot-blooded person who actually sees himself reflected in the indication, but actually has the symptoms slightly differently. You said he should actually go to a specialist and get advice, maybe select a different recipe. But who can do that? Who, who can? This knowledge that you have, do all TCM people have it? Many doctors are trained, have names for it. They're, they're trained and they can do it. OK, so if I go here with this book and say, I have a problem here, which, which tea mixture should I take? Do they then also work with such compactate teas? Well, it depends. Many and most of them do it differently. They just put together a recipe, their own. Or take an existing recipe, leave something out or add something. One can work with it. But this is a working basis. You can play with it depending on the condition of the patient. That's why you have to ask the patient for a long time, how are you? How do you face cold? When he says, I'm always frozen to death, and I ask, oh, I'm always huddled like this, then I already know that it's a freezing person and that lacks warmth. One would say in this language of Chinese medicine, it lacks warming yang. And so you can work your way up to these people bit by bit, so that the recipes, its effectiveness and the patient are in harmony. And then it works. I think this language is absolutely beautiful, what you say there. Get in balance, get in harmony. Life is balance. Exactly. And the illness is when the balance is just disturbed and the recovery through such aspects. I just think it's a shame that we've almost forgotten that here in Europe. Yeah, the balance. There's traditional European medicine and there's also historical development behind it. But everything is suppressed. Yeah, a lot broke, a lot was destroyed during the period of the Inquisition, the burning of witches. They kept such treasures. 
Hildegard von Bingen was a very clever woman. She was able to deal with it very well, with heat and cold and warmth. She understood that well, but otherwise all of them were murdered. Eventually, it was unchristian, and it was the stuff of the devil. And that's where things got destroyed. We've no history in that regard. In China, there's a connection to the ancient past, culturally, but also medically. And that's wonderful. So much has broken for us. When I look at statistics, like cancer statistics or all chronic disease statistics worldwide, it strikes me that China isn't on it at all. Almost not. I don't know if they don't make statistics or just the ones they want, or is this tried and tested TCM medicine so strong and effective that these mass cases just don't exist like with us? And there's more to it. The people believe in it. They know that from childhood, they saw how it works with grandma, grandpa, mum and dad, and they believe in it through this experience. And they want it back too. I worked in a clinic in Beijing. Some of the patients drove thousands of kilometers. And it was back then, it was uh, the mid 90s. That was difficult. There was a train that traveled at a maximum of 60 kilometers an hour. You had to change trains. The desire to be treated well has supplanted everything. And they have to put up with anything to be treated well. Back to the compact tapes again. I have an unbelievable number of things in here. Light back, rheumatism, rheumatism 2, back pain with exhaustion, calm mind, calm morning. So, incredibly many. And they're all combined in one recipe, compactate. And if I should now decide to buy such a compactate, in which pharmacy? Who mixes that up at all? I have to take a, a step back there. This book is not yet designed for compactates. I've made the prescriptions in such a way it is possible and that every pharmacy can convert it. You have to convert the numbers, you have to convert the quantities, and an online ed edition will be available soon. The book will be rewritten so that the recipes are all in compactate format. They are the same in terms of content, but have a number of advantages so that at some point it becomes pointless to write normal recipes down and it will be rewritten. Good, OK. And then I can get that where. There's a possibility in Switzerland, in Zurich, in the Leuven Apotheca. They're good at converting it. There's a, an internet address called www.compassan.de. You can order it there. You can find out where the pharmacies are. One can select a pharmacy in their area that can handle such things, such recipes. And then there's a brand new website of mine. It's called, quite simply, Hölle-Dieter.de. All the recipes are there again, and as they are in the book, and soon also as a compact date form. And I think the train station pharmacy in Kempton, it's a very large pharmacy here, which of course sells it. They have the big machine to make it. And this is a very recent development. Also in China, when I was in the hospital in the 90s, they still made tea for all the patients. They'd cooked it in such giant pressure cookers and have filled it in such small plastic bags. And they always had their daily rations on the bedside table. It was cut open and they drank it like tea. Sometimes it was even warmed up, but today everything's different. If I may, I'd like to say something more about the compact eights and their great advantage. Maybe a little story. I was in China and experienced a lot of successes. I was allowed to work independently to some extent, and it was really nice to see that. I was here in Germany, did the same thing, and it didn't work anymore. Now, I've racked my brains as to what I did wrong now. The psyche, right? I thought it all through. I thought about everything, whether that could be it. No. I then told my teachers there. Then they said they think they know what's behind it. They said, the goods, the export goods from China that come to us are of poorer quality. They get very fresh herbs in the hospital and they believe that the long transport route by ship 
And the humidity caused mould to develop on the herbs. They're effective in a different way or no longer effective at all. Or that the goods were simply stored in China for so long before they left. They simply lose value from an energetic point of view and also in terms of ingredients. I think that's it. Since I now have better quality, I've had success again. So I really think that was a quality issue. I remember a world-renowned TCM blend that was always important when infections have been around for centuries, even in these virus ages. That was the Shu Feng Jidu. And there I just saw that you actually only take it for three days. And done. Yeah. I still use it. As soon as a COVID patient comes, they get it from me if they have the corresponding symptoms, like fever, body acne, sudden occurrence. These are the main symptoms. There are a few others. Cough. There are other accompanying symptoms. And I still prescribe it, and with quick success. But sometimes I have to give two servings. I sometimes have to go from three to six. OK, so we just look at the tea blend to stabilise pre-existing conditions. That's what it was called, and we drank this tea for three days. And we never had any invul any vulnerability or infections, but just three days and that was it. And that's just the art of tea. Although it has to be said, Xu Feng Jidu actually works only weekly as a preventative. So when the symptoms aren't there, it's like the powder for men, that it, then it doesn't seem sensible. There must be symptoms, the sudden onset, there must be body aches, headaches, nausea. These are all important symptoms. If they're not there in any preventively, it doesn't work as well. There are better drugs out there. The yin chao san that is in the book is more suitable for prevention. It's exciting, even the WHO has included the Xufeng Jidu on their list as effective treatment concept adopted by the Chinese. I think we can still learn a lot. Basically, if we don't close our minds to the fact that there are tea blends, compactate mixtures that simply have medicinal efficacy. So throughout the COVID period, as long as we have the meds, I've not sent one patient to the hospital, not a single one. Not one was threatened. Nice. That's a questionable statistic, but for me, it's very important and very valuable that I have never seen a patient in mortal danger with this disease. There was a huge story around the disease. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for, the, for this first insight, dear Dieter. It was very valuable, and for me, that is naturopathy at its best in the premier class. Because if such recipes come to us so refined over the centuries, then we're all very well advised, dear viewers. Don't just rule things out. Maybe just consider incorporating that into your own recovery journey. And I can only encourage you to do so on such platforms of the pharmacies, which you've just heard, just read about. There is a lot of information about indications of which tea mixture would possibly be good for whom. And as I've said, I've read about tinnitus, I've read about stuffed noses, and if such a tea mixture is actually able to, that well, of opening something like that, it's just another miracle for me, which I accept very gratefully and I'm very happy to tell you about. Dear Dieter, hello, thank you very much. You stay here, we're about to do the next show. Fine, thank you. All the best to you, see you next time.